Hello and welcome to this episode of Powerhouse Experts. And as usual, we have an amazing guest. Yes, so we do. I'm going to tell you a little bit about this guy because he's so awesome. But then I'm going to turn it over to Stormy because Stormy is kind of like man crushing on him. So <laughs> he's got a lot of guys that he has these man crushes on. And this just so happens to be one of them. So our guest today has become a regular speaker, blog writer, mentor and coach for those who want to harness the power of inbound to strengthen and grow their revenue we like revenue up in here. <laughs> Culture and bottom line. He believes that the chief component of success is having the right attitude and delivers high energy lectures to business groups around the world. I love world leaders. I so love them. Don't you, Stormy? Absolutely. Yes. This powerhouse expert has spent over a decade and is the number six uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete. Is, is that like a it. single digit? <laughs> yeah, it's single, single digit. digits. Wow. Single digit. But wait, I haven't told you this. He's the number six guy and now the director at the mega powerhouse we know and love called HubSpot. What? Wait, that means we have Dan Tire in the house. <laughs> that means we've got Dan Tire in the wow, house. Wow, how about that, yeah. Dan? Awesome, awesome. Keep going, Deborah. That was, <laughs> I, like, if you got another 17 minutes of my bio, that like voice tone, keep going. Oh yeah, see, see, uh, I keep telling you, Stormy, I've got this. I know, <laughs> no, no, man crushes no. on me. Stormy. I, first of all, I've been a Stormy Andrews fan for like for three years. He and I did a program together. Yes, right? yes, and we did. I, I I came to Vegas two years ago to uh, present uh, to at a local local event, which was unbelievable. He packed the room; it was just tremendous, and uh, he provides value all the time. I am now sitting in uh, the coolest like pod podcast recording studio in America, Woo -woo. right? I feel like I sh I'm on Good Morning America. This is unbelievable. <laughs> wow. Stormy's on my right, and Nabor is on my left, and we're like doing briefing meetings, and I got the cool orange background, and like I can see myself, and if you ever want to do a professional podcast, you ping Stormy and you say, boom, I want to come in and see that uh, little booth that I'm spot or that uh, Dan Tyre was talking about, and he will give you the tour, set you up, and it's going to be awesome. That's right. Well, Stormy, yeah. Stormy doesn't have and any yeah. rights to, to, to post or to, to schedule anyone, so they have uh, to go through uh, me. Okay. But wait a Sorry, Deborah. Because no, no, I'm no. the boss. I thought you were the <laughs> voice. You're the voice, right? I'm I want your voice. voice. <laughs> well, thank you. Oh, I so awesome. appreciate that. No well, just worries. Make sure you when you ping me, you put it in writing that you want Deborah... <laughs> They have nothing to do with this. <laughs> Stop in that. Writing. Stop that. In writing. Stop that. I, listen, I'm no marriage counselor, and you guys work very, very well together. I'll tell you what. Use the hashtag uh, tire discount code. Is that too long? No. Yeah. Uh, how about um, I want viewers? How about that? Ooh, Ooh yes. I like it. Boom. All right. See, now we're fist bumping. We're laughing. <laughs> this is how the pre-meeting is gone. Not, no one can get in a word in edgewise. This is going to be awesome. First of all, Stormy has a voice like for radio. Were you on the radio? He has, uh, a, he has a face for radio. Yeah, I have a face for radio. I have a face for radio. You have a great that. voice. It's, there's a deep, booming voice. Deborah, yes. the way you phrase like words and stuff, you've got it Thank down. You. Thank you. And then Finally. I met like 15 of these employees here. One lady's in the Broadcasting Hall of Fame. This other person does all this kind of marketing. What a great location. All right, so I'm super excited to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me. I come to Vegas six times a year. I get to this studio once a year. So we got to put that on the... <laughs> put right, it on the calendar. On That's the, right. On the regular rotation, right? Absolutely. You're three minutes from the uh, from the airport. So even if you're anywhere in the Southwest, actually anywhere in the United States, you want to record in a good recording studio, you get right here, right? And Deborah will help you out. She'll set you up if there's room. She'll I squeeze will. you in yes. between Beyonce in the morning and, <laughs> I don't know, the Red Hot Chili Peppers who <laughs> are Hot like Chili. waiting outside. They're like waiting to come in at, into this recording studio it's all yeah, they'll they'll be squeezed between beyonce and then shaquille o'neal because i have this thing for shaquille o'neal no you way. hear that shaq day no shaq way. diesel shaq daddy i've okay. got a thing for all shaq right, diesel I'll hook you up with, uh, if you want me to hook you up with shaq he, he hooked me up i, I really? so want shaq on the show because he's become such a powerhouse businessman now yes from from yes. from his athletic career shaq, to okay. now business okay okay and this plus is not the, the eye candy sheet, but you Ooh. want me to go off on shaq first of all he's a very big man there's a picture of me in the Boston Globe when he graduated LSU. He went yes. to college. Uh -huh. yep. His first year, he played for the Orlando Magic. And uh, I, my uh, beautiful wife, Amy, 90% uh, of the smart things I say I clipped from my <laughs> wife. Right? Smart she, man. Amy, I know, I know. Amy, her a cousin, worked for the NBA. He, they got us tickets right behind the Orlando um, 
um, nice. like um, like the row of seats, right? The place right, where the players are. So in the Boston Globe, there's a picture of Shaqu- uh, Shaquille O'Neal, and I'm standing right behind him. And I swear to God, I don't even come up to his belly button. <laughs> and at the time, this was early Shaq. He was like a young man. He probably weighed like 285 pounds. I don't know what he weighs now, but I I look like a a, a mini human compared to Shaq. And then a mini human. <laughs> and, and then he uh, played for the Phoenix Suns for a while. Yes. Right. And he used to uh, practice at the gym that I went to. Really. Right? And his kids. Ah. So I I've seen Shaquille 12 times, and he's like he's a public figure, and it's hard to hide if you're Shaquille O'Neal, right? I don't know where you hide, yeah. right? In a Volkswagen somewhere? I don't know. <laughs> it, it's, it, it, he's like, thank you, thank you. And you know, he's very into law enforcement. He's very into yep. doing the right thing. He's very into like helping people. I, I'm like a huge fan. And he's a very fun I guy. am too. I am such right. a huge fan. All right, we'll see if we can get right. you Yeah, let's, l- let's do that. Deborah and Shaq. I Deborah mean, would you, and Shaq would you in the like, house. You'd interview him. I would studio. absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Right. We'll we make some calls. In the house. I'll have my people call Shaq's people. We'll see what can happen. That's right. There we go. Have our people connect with people. All right. That went off the rails pretty quickly. <laughs> right? We're but that's seven the norm for this show. I know. That's what you told me. You gave me like 20 questions you're going to ask. And I said, all right, we're going to get to two and a half of them. That's right. <laughs> if that. <laughs> Wait a second, so our readership is going up. All these Shaquille O'Neal fan club people like <laughs> coming in. <laughs> That's right. right. Shaq Diesel in the house. Shaq Daddy. <laughs> He's the only man that I call Daddy besides Fred Jr., which is my father. And don't forget about me. Yeah, right. <laughs> let's, not, not. Let's, not, let's not leave me out the equation. Not at all. So, Stormy, let's jump in. So Tell it's us just about so cool. You got this I, mean, I mean, just the fact that Dan's here, I'm just in awe. Uh, Dan, tell our audience a little bit about you. you. You know, when you started with HubSpot back in what 2007, you were the very first salesperson they hired. That's right. Wow, um, I didn't know that. You, uh, I'm the luckiest guy in the world. All right, first of all, no. uh, I have lived a charmed life. I've uh, done a lot of things, but uh, I, like I have all of these great stories. I've talked to all these people. I do a lot of stuff. I uh, was born in Washington, D.C. I grew up in outside of New York City. I went to school at Colgate University. Mm. Uh, I had uh, dinner with Bob Marley in 1980. Wow. Was, really? I know, I know. That's a claim to fame to my children. Uh, before Bob Marley was like on everybody's T-shirt, he was a reggae guy. And uh, I happened to, he played a show at Colgate University, which is an amazing story. Uh, I worked my way through college selling books door to door where I learned some elementary sales skills for the Southwestern Corporation. I uh, worked in um, Portland, Oregon, Bellingham, Washington, which was super impactful for me to learn basic sales skills. Uh, when I graduated in college, I was a bass player in a heavy metal rock and roll band. I had hair down to my shoulders. It was awesome. Nice. Uh, but you make like $20 a week when you're in that <laughs> industry. And I wanted to like buy a pair of sneakers, so I figured uh, it's time to me to move on. Uh, I got a, um, a job with this company called The Computer Store, which was the worst run company in American business. <laughs> These guys had an exclusive to sell uh, Apple computer east of the Mississippi. Really? And they somehow found a way to screw that up. Wow. And uh, the company was growing like crazy and uh, like they were losing stuff in inventory and it was horrible. Anyway, uh, I think it was 1983, my boss comes to me and goes, uh, I'm gonna move to a startup. And I'm like, what's a startup? He goes, it's a small company that's gonna move quick. I'm like, all right, nice. have a good time. He's like, no, 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 I wanna take you with me. I'm like, no, 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 I got a job. He goes, I'll pay you $1,500 more. I'm like, yeah, yeah. startups. <laughs> yeah. I'm a startup guy. So I joined this company, Business Land. Over the next uh, 10 years, it moved from a couple of million dollars to $1.4 billion. Wow. wow. I know, when a billion dollars was like real money. Right. Was re- exactly, it meant something. <laughs> it was awesome. I went, I worked, uh, started as a salesperson in Boston, and then uh, went to Framingham, which is outside of Boston, then LA, then San Francisco, then New York, and um, I was 28 years old, had uh, 350 people reporting to me. Uh, My division was a quarter of a billion dollars. I worked with some of the luminaries. It was Dave Norman, Enzo Terezi's company, right? It went public. Uh, A.J. McMillan was there. Uh, uh, Tons of great people. Uh, Murray Dennis was intricate. Uh, All these great business people when people were buying uh, computers by the truckload. So I got addicted to hyper growth. Uh, my next startup was an agency like uh, Yokel, Yokel here in uh, Las Vegas, and I uh, started in my dining room. It was built around Lotus Notes. Do you remember Lotus, Lotus Notes? Notes? I do I remember do. that. Oh, yes. I know. I know. Wow. And over the next <laughs> 10 years, we grew to the largest Lotus Notes professional services company in North America. That was super fun. Six locations, 250 employees. Uh, sold it to a Phoenix-based company. That's how I got to um, the Valley of the Sun. Uh, <laughs> my third startup went bankrupt. 
which taught me business planning and a little bit about humility. Uh, I learned a ton about how to make sure that uh, I always had a plan and a contingency plan. My fourth right. startup, um, Groove Networks, got bought out by Microsoft. Really? Yeah. So, uh, And their vice president of sales was this guy, Brian Halligan. And Brian and I did uh, multi-million dollar deals at a variety of Fortune 500 companies throughout the uh, United States. It was super fun. When Microsoft bought Groove, he went to MIT, met Darbesh. I went and worked for Microsoft for a year, which is super fun. And when they started UpSpot, Brian Halligan called me and said, we want you to join the company. I'm like, why? I live what? in Arizona. I know. Isn't that, it's freaky. I'm telling you, <laughs> I am the luckiest guy in the world. And I'm laughing. I'm like, I, I don't think I could be in Boston every, like all the time. He's like, yeah, that would ask be your lot. wife. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, so he's a smart man. He knows me. So I go, Amy, can I be in Boston four weeks out of the month? She's like, no. She doesn't even look up. She's like reading them. She doesn't even look. She's like, no. I go, How about like three weeks out of the month? She's like. No. I go, how about like two weeks out of the month? She's like, no. I got, I just got, dad, we got two kids. I don't want to be a, like a single, single parent. Mom? That's yeah. right. Yeah. Right. yeah. Absolutely. I told you my wife is super smart. I'm like, how about one week out of the month? She goes, maybe. <laughs> so I call out again. I'm like, I could be there one week out of the month. He goes, it's 2007. We'll make it work. And um, so I went to Boston in 2007, May of 2007. I worked for this guy, Mark Roberge. Now, have you ever yes. met Mark? Yes. Okay. You should have him as a podcast guest. This guy is amazing. Uh, these Mark days, Robert. he looks like a, a, a surfer guy, but he's an entrepreneur in residence at Harvard Business School. He wrote a book called The Sales Acceleration Formula. This guy nice. is the smartest guy, the, the best vice president of sales I ever worked with. And I've worked with a lot. Hunter was unbelievable. Allegan was good. He's got a big heart. He's super smart. He is uh, empathetic, and uh, we went from zero to $100 million in seven years. And wow. he drove the strategy. He wrote this book called The Sales Acceleration Formula, right? And it's all about how we did it. And he has the training program, the recruiting program, the scale-up program, the sales process program. And uh, he speaks all over the world now, a uh, uh, super good uh, fan. So uh, I started working for uh, Mark. I was like 47 years old. He was like 29. And uh, it was the best relationship for seven years. We had such a good time. It was so much fun. I learned so much stuff and HubSpot like took off. For the first, uh, I think it was 27 months, we never missed our number. We had a monthly number mm -hmm. where we would hire a salesperson every month and each salesperson had to bring in 10 new deals, right? So HubSpot at the time cost $250. Right. Wow. It's, a, it's not like <laughs> a little the, more than that. Yeah, yeah. a little more than that. <laughs> but it's a lot more software than it used to. Right. Absolutely. When it first yes. started, the first thousand customers, I think, were all in what we called beta. And um, like everybody, we'd hire one new salesperson and then uh, everybody would have a short ramp, but then they'd bring in 10 new customers. And, but we never missed our number. And in the early days, it was awesome. You'd pick up the phone and you'd call people. You're like, Stormy, I want to talk to you about this inbound stuff. They'd all ask two questions. They'd be like, what is inbound? And I'm like, well, it's a way you like optimize your website so that you get people to find your website so you can turn them into leads and customers. Right. They're like, okay, that makes sense. Does it work? <laughs> and I'm like, uh, we got like 35 <laughs> customers. It seems to make sense. These guys are all MIT people. Uh, we don't really know. And like in 2019, the story's a little bit different now. HubSpot is HubSpot. Right? Yeah. Thank you very yeah. much. <laughs> uh, traded on the New York Stock Exchange. The symbol is H-U-B-S. Right, worth about $6 billion. We have 3,000 employees, give or take, uh, eight major offices worldwide, sold in 132 countries, free software everywhere. And after 12 and a nice. half years, I am, I love HubSpot. Are you kidding me? I walked through the airport today. Some lady's going, hey, how do you know HubSpot? Because I'm wearing my HubSpot. <laughs> I go, I, I, I'm with the company. She goes, you work for HubSpot? He is HubSpot. I know, she's like, no. She's like pushing me like I, I'm a teenager. She's like, no, you work for HubSpot? <laughs> That's bad. And I'm like, okay, I guess. And uh, that happens all the time. Uh, and I do a lot of speaking. I have five jobs at HubSpot. One of them is um, today I'm speaking at, 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 on the Inbound Organization, the book I wrote with Todd Hockenberry. Let's put that book up. Absolutely. That's called Ooh, that Placement. Book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which uh, Wiley published in 2018 and has been a joy to promote and to read. And it's everything that I learned at HubSpot over the last 12 years. And uh, I'm a full-time employee. I love working with the young people at HubSpot. 
uh, the initiatives that HubSpot has, the way we deal with our partner program, amazing. We have the best partner program in the world. Absolutely. We now give away all the software. We're, uh, our chief people officer, Katie Burke, is a, a, a girl boss who leans into uh, girl diversity. Boss. <laughs> inclusion and belonging, right? We're all about diversity and uh, uh, understanding and raising every, our tagline is grow better. And that's what I like to do, right? My mission statement is to do the most good for the universe. HubSpot is a great channel for me to do this. I'd never be on this podcast if it wasn't for HubSpot. And so I am so grateful for the opportunity and it's so much fun, right? It's not like a regular company. It's like the kind of company that everybody wants to work for. We now hire remote uh, employees. We have this lady, Megan Williams, right? Who popped up on my radar screen like six months ago. I go, what's your deal, Megan? She goes, I'm responsible for the quality of life for all of our uh, remote employees. Wow. wow. Have you ever heard of that oh, before? That's crazy. Okay. And that, so that, uh, over the next last six months, she's implemented like 14 programs where now we have a uh, a remote employee water cooler. So everybody gets on a Zoom once a week and talks <laughs> about, we have all these wellness programs. We all practice yoga together. Somebody in Milwaukee, someone in San Diego, somebody in uh, like Dublin, right? We have this thing called the Tomodichi program where you call another remote employee and just say, Deborah, how are you doing? Tell me about you. So we're really? fostering these relationships. Wow. We're all on Slack. And this lady, Megan, is unbelievable. And then to top it off, I hear that she's like a member of our human resource department. I go, that can't be possible. All I do is fight with human resources. <laughs> no one in human resources has ever been accretive to my like work environment. She's like, no, I work for you. I go, that's impossible. Right. And, but it's true. And like unbelievable, super fun and uh, can't stop. So HubSpot gets it. HubSpot, HubSpot I, is the great. They get it. I, okay. I'm like uh, the... Um, the announcer for the baseball team that always roots for the home team, right? right. You get me started. Forget about it. the next 27 minutes. I can give you 40 reasons why HubSpot is the greatest company in the world, regardless of my contribution. Uh, first of all, um, the philosophy is to help everyone grow better, right? That's the tagline, grow better. And I, that's that, internally and externally. It, exactly. Okay. So uh, I've been in meetings where senior executives have said, should we help all of humanity or should we help our customers? Which is more important? And like a two hour discussion of like that meaningful kind of stuff and uh, wow. amazing, amazing kind of stuff. And um, like the, the book, The Inbound Organization, is all about how to take these principles that the founders stand for and bring them to your employees and to your, um, to your customers. And, um, right, we have this thing called an M-spot. And Deborah, have you ever heard of an M-spot? No. It's a HubSpot thing. Have you ever heard of it? I have not. Okay, so it's in the book, right? And uh, Todd Hockenberry, who's my co-author, the best co-author in the history of books, Todd is unbelievable. He's your size, Stormy. Yep. He's got that big, like, voice. He's a HubSpot partner yeah, as well. I was on the phone with Todd a few days ago. Oh, that's ago. right. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, okay, I know Yeah, Todd. there we go. Absolutely. And, and, and Todd and I wrote the book. The book would not have been written if it wasn't for Todd Hockenberry. And uh, we were both speaking in Southern California, and I was speaking on the Inbound Organization. That was the name of my presentation. He was speaking on the similar kind of thing in manufacturing, but it was essentially uh, the same kind of concept. And he's like, well, we should write a book together. And I thought about it for about six seconds, and I'm like, Okay, let's do it. And so we started writing and it was awesome. I'm like all, first of all, have you ever written a book, Deborah? Yes, I have. Okay. So yes. it's hard. It was a coloring book. Yeah. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> no, it, it was a coloring book. Come on, Deborah. Be Stormy's honest. just hating because I came out with one before he did. <laughs> okay. So, so uh, <laughs> was it easy or hard for you to write your book? It, it was, um, once I actually got into the flow, it became easier. But I think there was an, there was an intimidation factor. It's that okay. was when you get to get started. Okay. To get started was was difficult. Okay. So uh, no one ever taught me how to write a book. I thought writing a book was doing a podcast like right. this. And I talk for <laughs> a living, man. I don't really work for a living. Right, exactly. I'm like a teenage girl. All I do is sit on the phone and talk to people all the time. <laughs> That's my job, right? And it's super fun. And that people right. kind of laugh at my jokes. And a like, I'm like, get, get moving. <laughs> And, and, and so I'm like, all right, we're going to write a book. I'm going to sit down and talk, and then we're going to write it. And, and then we were like a week and a half in it, and we're like, okay, writing a book is nothing like talking, right? You <laughs> no, know, that's true. It's I, not. It's I not, agree. I know. And, and so Todd is like, okay, we can figure this out. And, and we had both done a lot of blog articles, but he's like, all right, we're going to figure this out. And in hindsight, 
what happens is you write a book, then you rewrite the book, then you rewrite, rewrite the book again. Absolutely. And Nobody I'm, I'm in that. another rewriting phase right now. Nobody yes. ever told me that. <laughs> I'm like, oh, you write the book three times. If you had told me that, I would have like worked it out. So Todd is like logical. He's like supportive. He, I, I'd never heard him raise his voice. We worked hundreds of hours in 2000. I saw Todd on the little Zoom, right? He came to my house a, a few weeks to write together, but we um, we spent I spent more time with him than with my wife. It was amazing. <laughs> Not one argument. Never had one argument. And he developed into a really good writer. He uh, had his uh, like uh, support system and his beautiful wife uh, Leanna um, like work through all of the indexing and things like that. And we would never have done it without Todd. And he's an expert in manufacturing inbound. Right. right? Wow. So he would always tell me, Tyre, get out of your HubSpot bubble. And I'm like, what? He's like, no, there's no other company that, I, I'm like, well, we gotta have a chapter on the M spot. He goes, no one knows what an M spot is. I like every company has an M spot. And he's like, no one has an M spot, Dan. And I'm like, he's got like, that's why you have to write the book. Or a wiki, do you know what a wiki is? Mm -mm. Okay, do you know yep, what a wiki is? I know what a wiki is. Okay, so uh, you're not alone, Ooh. Deborah. Lots of people are at HubSpot, we have a wiki, which is like a bulletin board. It's an internal bulletin oh, board yes. okay. where people post information and then everybody, anybody in the company, from an intern all the way up to the CEO, can post responses. And everybody puts, this is what we're going to do on the wiki. These are our kind of um, our initiatives. These are our goals. And it's a great way to stay updated on all the things that are happening, right? So there's now, um, like, um, there's a company wiki, and then it breaks down into each one of our regions mm -hmm. and a market wiki, all these kind of things. But if I ever want to know what's going on, there's total transparency with an upspot. So uh, when you run a larger organization, keeping everybody focused is pretty important. Right, Right, Absolutely. you've got 20 people here, and what do you do to keep everybody, like, focused on the mission? Leaves I the should. office. <laughs> <laughs> Gets out. We're supposed to keep that internal, Deborah. They're not supposed <laughs> okay. to know yeah. that I'm the disruption around yeah, Right. Here. Okay. That's right. right. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> that is not true. I, uh, uh, Stormy introduced me to all of his employees. They were very gracious. And you obviously have a good group here, right? They all love Phenomenal. working for you. Mm -hmm. I know. And they're all yeah. like happy and they're like doing meaningful work and who was it? Justin said, I get to think and work. Absolutely. And he's like, no, no, this is not like a real job. This is like what I thought I would like my dream job. Right? It's Which like, you, you know what? It's almost like uh, I'm listening to what you're saying. And so from a third party from the outside, because I'm not actually a, 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 um, a, a, an employee of Yokel. Yeah. So I can say this. It's a lot of the stuff that you guys, that, that you're saying about your meetings and different things. Yeah. I don't know if Stormy stole them because he's good for doing that. But he has duplicated, he and Daryl have duplicated a lot of what you're saying with their employees, with the teams, with, I was t telling someone on another show a couple of weeks ago, I was being interviewed on a podcast and I had to, to sneak out of the office because they were making so much noise in a company, company meeting that it was loud, they were clapping, they were laughing. I'm like, what are you guys doing? I, I, I came know. here because it was supposed to be quiet, but I know. it was like a party. But you know, there's one thing that I do wanna go to. Um, in this book that we keep talking about, yes. uh, that, that, that book that we keep talking about, is Inbound there anything? Inbound Organization. Hush, shh. <laughs> <laughs> Inbound Organization. Is there any mention in there of Stormy and He's Darryl? chapter 26. All right, oh, before I get down on that, he's chapter 26. 26, right? okay. It's the, we call it the Winehouse chapter. I don't know if that's the actual name for it. Uh, but w uh, as the company has grown, as HubSpot has grown, one of the things that was super important is we're a mission-driven organization. And what we find is, is today's workers have lots of options, today's employees. Right. Would you prefer to work for a mission-driven organization or a non-mission-driven organization? Of course, a mission-driven. Why? Well, because in the, we have an idea of the direction. Er, everything is clear at that point. That's right. And it's laid out. And instead of us guessing and playing it by ear, it's laid out and we're working for a specific goal. That's right. And when you talk to uh, Stormy and Daryl's um, employees, they understand the mission. When you've got they 12 do. people, right, you can explain it to them. Once you right. get to multiple offices, you've got uh, 500 people, it's hard. It gets yes. harder, so absolutely. So HubSpot invented, this guy J.D. Sherman is the CEO of HubSpot. He's a little bit goofy. He wears like a um, cowboy coat that says CEO of HubSpot with rhinestones. And, oh, you really? You're in Vegas. You, you see that all the time. I like right? it, absolutely. Uh, and and, and uh, Frank Osher, who's our CEO, brilliant. John Kelleher, our uh, chief legal counsel, brilliant. 
uh, unbelievable uh, Darmesh, our co-founder, they're like, we need to make sure there's one document that everybody understands all the, the what HubSpot is all about. Mm -hmm. So they created this thing called MSpot about five years ago. And uh, we see it all the time. It's a HubSpot employee at every company meeting. I think we have uh, six a year. Uh, we see the corporate M spot and it's on that wiki that corporate I talk about. I like it. And an M spot stands for number one, your mission. That's your mission. HubSpot's mission is to help millions of small businesses grow better, right? And everybody knows that that's our mission because we know it because you see the M spot all the time. Every company meeting JD puts up the M spot M and spot. everybody said the next thing, the S in the M spot is who you serve. Right. Mm. These are the people in the book. It talks about strategy. Right. It's morphed a little bit. So that's who you serve. Right. And that's the constituencies that you work with. So for Upspot, it's our partners and our customers. Right. Right. That's who we're trying to. That's the focus. Then the P in M spot is your programs or your plays. Right. And we're going to do the workshop this afternoon. So I'm going to show you a couple of examples where people have five or six plays that they're going to do uh, this year that are impactful for the mission and who we serve for the program. The wow. T in M spot is the targets. That's how we know if we're going to be successful or not, right? If we want to grow 35% or we want to open Brazil, or if we want to do something specific, right? In the M spot, you're going to have, um, this is uh, our expectation. And then in some M spots, you have like a stretch goal. This is our stretch target. Right. And then the O's are the most fun. The O's in M spot stands for omission. Mm -hmm. Those are the things you're not going to do. And uh, when you have a large organization of overachievers, right, there's yes. always stuff. The key to any business, and I'm sure you tell your clients this, is a focus. Right. I spent half my life saying, all right, let's focus, focus. on a niche. Let's focus on a customer. Let's focus on customer satisfaction. Let's focus on our employees. And focus is extremely important. And it's really hard for entrepreneurs because you want to do everything. Absolutely. you got yes. a big heart. You know that. You want to grow. You want to do all these kind of things. But the omissions in HubSpot, in your M spot, are all the things that you're not going to do this year. And it's very, very empowering because people will get into the meetings in October, will pick our like uh, initiatives and we'll put them into plays. We'll pick our targets. We'll archive those. And the omissions are things that we considered, but we're not going to do in uh, 2019 or 2020. But people feel still feel like they've heard right. th yes. that they've participated. And, and then everybody sees the M spot. The M spot is highly uh, anticipated. This year on the M spot, we have uh, diversity, inclusion, and belonging. Right. So in Diversity, 2019, and belonging. this unbelievable powerhouse executive, Katie Burke, MIT trained, our chief people officer. Have you ever heard that people. title? No, chief I haven't. But but I think more companies should have it. A chief Absolutely. people Damn officer. Straight. Katie Burke. Chief yes. People, people officer. officer. She's the voice of the employee. Right. We were making Ooh, fun. Nice. I know. Yes. I, I don't really need a voice. But if I did. Right. Katie Burke is like the smartest person. And she stands up for like the type of uh, work-life balance and working environment that we need. And um, in the book, we asked this guy, Frank Osher. Frank is one of the smartest guys I've ever known. He was in a lot of meetings together. Uh, and uh, Frank is a little bit uh, cagey. He would sit in the front row and he'd look at me just like that. <laughs> like I did, no, no, no. He'd squinch up his nose a little bit, just like he just did. And he'd be like, and I could tell that Frank had a question he was going to ask the question and I knew it was going to be the exact right question that I had no idea what the answer was. I knew Frank knew the question and the answer. And he got this little like grin on his face. <laughs> and so uh, I'm a big fan of Frank and his wisdom. So I go, Frank, what's more important? I'm going to ask you, uh, Scurry. Uh -oh. Uh, uh oh. I'll ask you, Deborah, too. What's more important, your customers or your employees? Let's go with Stormy first. You know what? Without the employees, I have no customers. So you're saying employees. Wow, which is more important? I know. You know what I mean? That, that, that's such a tough one. I but know. I'll, I'll tell I you what, because I... This is that Shaquille O'Neal yeah. on this podcast. <laughs> I'm not talking about layups. I am getting right to the meat. Well, you know, here's the interesting thing. You know, it's... it's um, I'm going to have to go with employees. All right, stop right there. Deborah? Both. You can't say both. You got to yeah, one you camp or the one. other. What kind of? I, that is a, a frequent question. And to Stormy's frequent credit, action. he yeah. thought about it for like, I mean, right off the cuff. I, that wasn't in the briefing sheet. It's a hard question to answer. Mm -hmm. But if you have to pick one or the other. 
If I have to pick one or the other, I think I would. Oh, and I hate to do this. Ugh, go with Stormy. <laughs> take the other I side of the have coin. To say, for the sake of this, just take the okay, other side of the coin. Okay, for the sake of this. For the sake of this. Um, all right. I'm a, anybody can be the employee. Let's go with the customer. Okay. You're both. You were going to go with the employee. So it, that is the right answer. So okay. Frank, in his admirable um, wisdom, says, Dan, do you love your wife or do you love your mama? Right? <laughs> and I know. And I'm like, you love them both. He goes, but you have Wowza. to love your employees more. Because if you don't have happy employees, you're not going to have happy customers. So Absolutely. your instincts were right. And, and if you don't have a happy wife, you won't have a happy <laughs> life. <laughs> that is true. Right? That's my motto. Yes, dear. That's, <laughs> yes, dear. <laughs> you learned that. I know. I, I've Absolutely. been married 30 years, 29 Listen, great Stormy. years, one mediocre one. But Amy and I. One mediocre one. Amy and Less I. Less Stormy. She's my best friend. She's unbelievable. Your employees, you got to lean into your employees, yep. right? Uh, your employees very much appreciate this working environment. We just heard that for a half an hour. And that's why you have happy customers. And if your employees aren't like that, right, who we were making fun with Amanda, we were saying like, this is like playland, right? You come here, you can be creative, you can do all this stuff. You go to like a regular job. Have you ever had a regular job, Deborah? It's been about 30 years, but okay. yeah, long time ago. You like put on pantyhose and like you went into an Well, I was a flight and... attendant, so, but okay. but that was uh, fun. But prior to that, I did have like a, or after was that. Was that on like Con a... Air? <laughs> yeah. <You> just... <laughs> You guys are horrible. So rude. <laughs> Would you guys be nice to so each other? Rude. All right. Our so next subject is I did is have a, be... a, a loan job. So, yeah, okay. I did have that. And you, and yeah, you had to put was... on like a suit? And, yes. And, and yes. Did you like it? Oh, gosh, no. In exchange for a paycheck every two weeks, yes. right? They yeah. suck out your soul. And when yep. you go yeah. to work for some of these big companies, right, your mission is what says on the wall. And then mm -hmm. everybody ignores you. At HubSpot, it is amazing, right? Because we want everybody to grow better. It's exactly what you said, internally and externally, right? We want to walk the walk, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, we have all of these um, programs that are in place so people can bring their own best self, mm -hmm. right? So they don't have to feel like they have to be somebody that they aren't, where they can, uh, like, realize their goals and just like your employees today told me and, and you know what the funny part about that that's that, that's so amazing and you said to, to, told me to be nice so i'm going to be nice for a minute is daryl and stormy have created such an environment that despite the fact that i went out on my own that event that you were talking about i don't yep. know if you recall i, I was do. emceeing that yeah event. i was teaching social media in that event um the podcast here if there's an event here I get a notification just like the employees do, and I have an option as to whether I want to come and join. And if there's something that I had that I'm able to participate with, they have always extended that. And because the environment is so amazing, we, that's why I keep coming back. Don't there was the one exception. <laughs> there was the one exception. Share the one exception. Which one? Uh, the event I forgot to tell you about. Oh, <laughs> yes. Okay, so two Christmases ago. I'm sitting on Facebook and I'm like, da -da 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 -da. and I'm like, huh? They're, they're, how did they had a Christmas party? Hmm. I didn't get an invite. <laughs> so Stormy claims. Now I know that Daryl would never do this to me. Stormy claims. I thought Daryl was letting you know. Daryl said, Stormy, you said you were gonna tell her. Nothing. Yeah. I didn't get an invite oh, to the wow. Christmas party. Anything. But that'll never happen again. <laughs> Not after this I've been relieved of those so duties. That's right. <laughs> He's, he doesn't I'm relieved have of all of duties. So even last week we had a, uh, did Nikki tell you about the masseuse that came in last week? I was here. Thank oh, you. Oh, you were here. Yeah. So we had a masseuse that came in last week to give so everyone good. chair massages. So good. And, uh, oh, I have to let her know not to let you know next time. <laughs> but that's a different story. I love it. So there's a couple of things that... Um, makes HubSpot and that culture are so good. One is our uh, people operations folks that all over the world, they mm -hmm. uh, try to make it easy to be employed. Uh, one is we have a sabbatical program, right? Uh, what do you mean? After six years, mm -hmm. they give you uh, four weeks off with pay. <coughs> they give you $5,000 to go anywhere in the world so that you can spend what? time. Oh, wow. Spend time. I went to Africa, seven uh, countries, 27 days. Oh, I'm going to show you my gorilla selfie. Wow. Right? wow. Amazing. It is a life-changing benefit. After you've been at HubSpot for 10 years, you get a second sabbatical. That's so, amazing. So this is an employee, not this is not like director level, like you're way Everybody. up there. I, oh, I, I'm not way up there. Goodness. Uh, you were talking about my title. I became a director at HubSpot in the um, my second year, and I haven't gotten a promotion in the last 10 years. I don't care. 
right? I don't need any external validation. I got one boss. That's my beautiful wife. And uh, <laughs> I just like being associated with them. So it's super fun. It's super cool. The sabbatical program, which they put in place eight years ago, I've taken two sabbatical, unbelievably helpful. Wow. Uh, number two, we have a program called HubSpot for Startups, which this guy, John Sullivan, who worked on my team, invented. Uh, James Stone uh, like uh, grew, and now this uh, incredible uh, woman, uh, Kim Walsh, is the vice president of HubSpot for Startups. It's amazing. Uh, I'm always gratified of how we treat our uh, alumni, right? Mm. We call them illustrious okay. What you said, mm -hmm. in the old days, like five years ago, if you quit, <coughs> people like non like regular people would like hate you. They're like, exactly, oh, we right. can't right. talk yeah. to Deborah. She's a traitor. And at HubSpot, if you give us a, like a, a couple of years and you try and uh, you decide you go off and do something else, you're considered an illustrious alumni. You're right. always welcome back. We, you, we send you stuff. We keep our alumni updated with mm -hmm. actual events. There's a Facebook page, all that kind of stuff. And there's no hatred. We're like, we appreciate you because as uh, like smart people, we know that there's times when you might have to move across the That's country. It. You might want to do your own deal. That mm -hmm. is a great thing. And uh, one of the things that I have is the uh, Tire Mentorship Program. If you want more information, go to www.dantire.com. And uh, I started mm -hmm. um, maybe... Um, I think uh, Halligan or somebody came to me and said, we need to have a mentorship program at HubSpot. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was presenting at our Helm meeting, which is all the senior managers. And I, I asked people, uh, how many of you had mentors when you were uh, like um, climbing the ranks? That's Every, it, yes. 100 people, 100 percent of the people raised their hand. Right. I'm like, OK, well, we should have one. They're like, all right, Tyre, fix that. So I worked with this guy, Frank and uh, Mike Champion and uh, uh, Ilias Torres and uh, David um, Cancel. And we pulled together this uh, this program and uh, we started to do it. And I took a, uh, like 10 mentees because I was very, very into it. Super fun. It kept me uh, grounded. It was just super exciting. And then uh, a couple of those people left. And um, like they're saying, will you still mentor me even though I'm outside of HubSpot? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I I I'll check. I'm talking to Darmesh. I go, can I mentor people? He goes, heck yeah. Right? It's not just about HubSpot. It's nice. about people. Yes. Right. And yes. so now it's grown. There's like 40, 50 people in the mentorship program. And we have five other mentees and we're happy. Anybody needs a mentor, on listen to this podcast. You talk with Listen. Deborah, talk to Stormy, and we'll, we have CEOs who do it. We have uh, Diana Gibson, who's a VP at Microsoft. We have um, Mary Tautimez, who's the co-president of an insurance company, and uh, like we make that available at no charge. The only, wow. The only requirement That's... that you have is after you complete the program, it's a two-year program, we want you to become a mentor so that you can give back, right? Because strong, powerful mentors – Right. First of all, help you define your goals. Second of mm -hmm. all, keeps you focused. Right. Third of all, holds you accountable. Right. And if you're going to write that second book, Deborah, you need somebody who like makes oh, sure that you're going to write that second book. We're right here. We all are right. eye to nice. eye because wow. I'm like your next nice. mentee. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Right. Just, I am like your next mentee. Go to Tantire.com <laughs> and just fill out the form or go to uh, just send me an email, DTiredUpspot.com. HubSpot has helped facilitate all of that, right? Everything. Wow. The, the thing that is transform about HubSpot, first of all, uh, out of my five startups, three have been highly successful okay. and uh, super, super fun, right? So I'm a startup guy. Uh, I now invest in startups. I have about 35 angel investments. I serve on four boards of directors, which is a lot of work, but super fun. Um, one of them is a massage company uh, in corporate massage is Utah based. This unbelievable woman, Amelia Wilcox, is a massage therapist, started this company in her, in her basement, right? Mm, okay. And I met her because she bought HubSpot in like 2014. And wow. she's like, scaling this business. And I'm like, well, I can help you maybe. And then over time, um, became an investor and then on their board of directors. And uh, now it's a $4 million company. Really? We employ a thousand nice. part-time massage therapists all throughout North America. And uh, these are largely women that sometimes have kids that a part time. They need their own schedule. Uh, exactly. Mm -hmm. Nice. Right. And this lady, Amelia Wilcox, in the red shoes, she's been to the White House. She's been to Harvard to lecture. She is like a powerhouse. Right. And uh, helping give back in that fashion. Super, super meaningful, important. That all came from like a HubSpot vision of trying to help people wow. grow better. Right. And then the ability to channel it. And the book is all about. I frequently say, uh, after a 44-year business career, everything changed in 2007. Mm -hmm. The sales and marketing process changed. The mindset changed. Yes. And I don't know, did you guys see, um, 
I think it was IBM and JP Morgan and 150 companies came together about a month and a half ago and they said profits are no longer the goal or the mission of yes, this company. I did did see really? that? Yes, I did. Really, I did not see that. Okay, I, did. I'm gonna okay. yeah. the I want to see that. Yes. That's yeah. interesting. We should put it on the Facebook page. Absolutely, right? yes. It got a lot of press because it was very, very controversial, mm -hmm. right? The old line guys are like, no, 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 no. Uh, right. We, our mission is to make money. Let's sure. be very, very clear. Right. And everybody under 30s, eyes rolling back going, oh my God, <laughs> let me polish off my resume because <laughs> I never want to work with this bonehead. <laughs> and, uh, but they're moving in the right direction. They're they're saying what's more important than profits is employees, mm -hmm. is community involvement, is uh, sustainability, is all those other things that in the 21st century of uh, diversity and inclusion. Yes. Wow, right? and that's well, incredible. I know, and these are like these old the, line companies, absolutely, right? That are moving into the 21st century. That is a seminal like um, uh, transition of like it's different. Now you enjoy that philosophy here, right? And right. You walk the walk. Right, it's a beautiful place out there. Everybody's like happy and smiling. They can drink like and uh, relax. <laughs> I don't, I don't know something. if they're drinking beer, but they're drinking yeah. like and they're something. just right. <laughs> and I'm surprised we have free beer. Did I tell you that? Yeah. Okay. No. Are you serious? No, no, no. You go, and it's not like um, Miller Lite or something it's like that. It's good stuff. You've been there, right? Yeah, I've been there. Okay. Absolutely. They've got vending machines with like i iPads. Yeah. Beats headphones. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. Or in that the vending is so machine. Cool. The underlying yeah, thing yeah. is we trust all our employees. Oh my goodness. We trust all of our wow. if you it's hard to get into HubSpot. The statistics is harder to get into HubSpot as an employee than MIT or Harvard, right? Really? The percentage wow. of people that we take. And, but if you get in, which is the hardest job, we're gonna support you hundred percent. We are gonna make sure that uh you are uh uh, trained effectively. We're going to make sure if um, you uh, fall into a, a group that needs a little bit of help, right? There's uh, a, a people of color at HubSpot, POCA, this mm -hmm. lady, Melissa Oplita. People of color. People of color at HubSpot. Okay. She started this group like five years ago. Okay. And uh, when we first, like five years ago, we realized we weren't very diverse. Uh, okay. Ethnic diversity, um, uh, gender diversity, um, age diversity, um, for whatever reason. And this, we said we got to change that. So this lady, Katie Burke, said, you know how we're going to change it? We're going to publish our diversity statistics online, right? What? And we're, <laughs> and we're going to tell everybody we suck at this, right? Really? And so wow. uh, that's a good way of like that's holding a good way yourself of holding accountable, yeah, right? Absolutely. Yeah, okay, absolutely. so here's the incredible story. Uh, three, four years ago, 25% uh, of our executives were and our managers were women. The next year, it was 35%. Uh, the next year it was 42%. The next year it was 48%. And today, ladies, wow. woo, woo, woo. Th three, uh, w we have three women and a person of color on our board of directors, three women, right? Wow. And uh, you would think that that was just life, right? right. That's 15% right. of companies on the New York Stock Exchange have those diversity kind of thing. And that makes me hugely proud. 15%, wow. 15%. That's, yeah, that's huge. That's Deborah, so how you so huge. How are you gonna sell to women if you don't have women, women. in decision making? Deci exactly. And I'm at our inbound conference. Every year we have this inbound conference, 26,000 people in Boston, Yep. right? You've been there before, Absolutely. right? Absolutely, Okay, Absolutely. and it's a madhouse. It's like a Taylor Swift concert. It's a <laughs> madhouse, right? And I've seen pictures, yes. It's unbelievable. And um, uh, I was listening to these young women who were talking. I, I, we were like getting lunch at the food trucks. That's how they- I, I love the food, food trucks. trucks. Yeah, food trucks. Oh. And, and these ladies are like, no, it's different here at HubSpot. They're like women who actually make the decisions. There, it's not like one woman in human resources that's just like hanging out with the dudes. There's like real women, and it is true. Allison Ellsworthy and Katie Burke and Katie Engmag is my boss. I hired her 10 years ago. Listen to this. She started as a BDR. She moved to a salesperson, moved to the international division where we work together, moved to the um, agency partner program where she became a director. She got promoted while she was on maternity leave. Oh, that? stop. That's, I know. That's my buddy, Pete Caputo. He's like, no, she's the best person for the job. And everybody's like, yeah, but she's having a baby. And he's like, so, so, and, and so they promoted her. Wow. I, I, know, I, know, I know, I know, I know, I'm crying. Like I'm a, a raving fan. Know. Now, you know, know, it's kind of funny that you say that because you had talked about Daryl and Stormy normally going, to, they normally go to HubSpot. Well, this year, Daryl and Stormy did not go. They sent the two ladies, Amanda and Shadrina. They sent them to HubSpot. Servant leadership, right? It, it, it's exactly. Okay. So the, instead of them going, the two ladies awesome. from the office went. Awesome. And I keep telling Stormy, I told him this, and you, you tell me your thoughts on this, Dan. I told Stormy, um, he's speaking on some, some, some really powerful stages now. 
And I said, you need to get on the HubSpot stage. Go. Come on. It's hard. I've uh, been blessed to speak at all of the inbounds since 2012, the first one. Uh, and I do a lot of speaking on behalf of HubSpot. I have uh, 60 or so speaking engagements every year. I'm headed to um, Boston this weekend, then to uh, London, and then to Dublin next week. Nice. Um, now, does the wife go on these international oh, yeah. trips? Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. There you go. Smart woman. Uh, I, I love her. I know. I, <laughs> believe me, if Amy was maybe on this I podcast, be, maybe I would I, be right. <laughs> maybe I should be having her mentor me. <laughs> uh, she's in the program. <laughs> she loves it. She is awesome. I'm telling you. Um, and... Um, like, if I was 22 years old, you wouldn't be listening to me. It's the gray hair. People like the gray <laughs> hair. They, and they, they do that. I true. got some pretty good stories. And uh, after 300 presentations, I hopefully will, like, uh, do a good job this afternoon. But it's super fun, mm -hmm. right, because uh, being in the same room with folks, right, uh, I feel like uh, I, uh, I'm i synonymous with the HubSpot brand. I love the HubSpot Obviously. brand. I love what they've done. And uh, Brian Halligan, our CEO, Darmesh Shah, who is our co-founder, he's the Buddha of HubSpot. I've known him for 12, 13 years, never heard him swear, right? And wow. he's just nice and meaningful. And now he's funny. He does his inbound presentation. Absolutely. He's hilarious. He's an introvert. And I don't know how you become an introvert when you're speaking in front of 20,000 people, but he's like incredibly hilarious. He's funnier than me, which I'm a little bit disgruntled about. <laughs> but, uh, and it, they're saying, no, 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 Dan, we're trying to create the kind of company that you can be proud of. And I'm like, oh my goodness, I'm proud of it. And that like you, your grandkids can be proud of you. And mm -hmm. same thing with our partner channel, right? I love working with Stormy and all the HubSpot uh, partners, agency partners. Katie Yang Mack, by the way, who we were talking about, she now is the global vice president for all wow. of the partners. That's 40% of our business. Wow. Uh, she, she's unbelievable. She's um, Harvard trained, Harvard Business School, I think, Columbia trained, super empathetic, uh, just a great, great uh, executive, super proud to work within our organization, super fun. So let me ask you this, Dan, what is one thing, we've got individuals that listen and, and a lot of our base is um, C-suites, they're business yeah. owners, they're executives. Yeah. How do they go about creating the environment that you're speaking That's about? Right. That's right. So the first thing is, I hope this is not yeah. too no, no, let's You buy be the book, be 100%. right? Okay, you buy the book because this is, it's not about how you do the uh, sales and marketing stuff, uh, um, Stormy and Daryl can teach you how to do that. You, uh, the whole idea is that uh, inbound is really a business philosophy, okay. right? And uh, you embrace the inbound philosophy. That is, do you like to help people? Absolutely. Why? Um, well, for one, I just have a spirit of servitude and, and it makes me feel good helping them. You know, okay. I live on that philosophy. I'll okay. get everything I want as long as I help enough people get what they want. Okay, unbelievable. Have you ever heard of the book called The Go-Giver? Yes. Yes, I have. Mm -hmm. yes. What do you know about the Go Giver? Oh, well, here's a funny thing. I just yeah, have to I share this about with you. It. <laughs> so, um, love the book. Uh, I have hard copies and the audio book, and you know Rachel's Coffee. But I won't bring up Rachel's Coffee right now because I'm, I've been looking for Rachel's Coffee. But here's the cool thing about the book: I belong to a business organization, and that big business organization. When we have visitors, uh, I bought ten copies of the Go Giver, and when anyone comes in that's visiting our chapter. I give them a complimentary copy because it's just an incredible book. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, exactly right. So when you, that wasn't in our briefing meeting, when I asked you, do you like helping people off the cuff through your heart? You said that everybody on this podcast can hear that, right? That is who you, you are. Yes. Right. And you've been like that for how long? A week. <laughs> As long as I can remember, <laughs> except yes. when it comes to storming. Yeah, yes. your entire <laughs> adult life. Okay. Yes. So you, that is what we call inbound. Inbound okay. means that you help not sell. It means you treat people like human beings. It means Ooh. that you're data oriented. That means that you focus on certain specific niches because by definition you can do a better job there. And uh, it's not being a pushy salesperson, it's the servant attitude right. leading with helping, right? HubSpot has what's called the HubSpot Academy. Mm -hmm. Right, which is um, 84 hours of free training to anyone, anywhere in the wow. world, in multiple languages, right? If it was through a university, they would charge you $20,000 for this. We give it to you free. The reason we do that is because we want to help you, right? And we know if we help enough people, 
right? Mm -hmm. We have tangible proof. The company yes. is worth like whatever it's worth the market cap on the New York Stock right. Exchange because the more people you help, it's exactly what you said. That is the inbound philosophy. And, and the reason we wrote the book is everybody would say, well, how do I become an inbound organization? And we say, well, the first thing you need to do is define your mission. Mm -hmm. So go to www.inboundorganization.com. Um, Todd and uh, the, the team have pulled together an assessment. And you take this assessment, I think it's 64 questions, and it will tell you how ready you are to move to inbound. Wow. There I we know. Go. It's awesome. We're going to do it today at the workshop, right? Which there is awesome. Go. Absolutely. Uh, yes. I know. It's and, exciting. Uh, and, and so everybody will be, and, and usually um, you're either ready to make that jump or you're not. Sometimes people are like, ah, no, I'm not sure we're that kind of company. Right. And uh, it's important because it, the companies that get the best people will win. Absolutely. Right? And Absolutely. The, the companies that are mission driven and like the people that we saw in the lobby here today, they're are, are going to perform and do better work than somebody yep. who's just mailing it in. So becoming a mission driven organization and then being able to create that culture that we were talking about okay. and having a culture code, HubSpot, just uh, Google HubSpot culture code. It's the most HubSpot downloaded. HubSpot culture code. Yes. Google that. Yes. It's the most downloaded slide share in the history of slide share. Uh, really? Like wow. Four million downloads or something like that. It's 128 slides written by Darmesh, updated by Darmesh over the last 10 years. And it says, right, we value these type of um, attributes for the people that we hire. And if you don't have these attributes, it's not a good place for you. And if you're not going to be humble, I'm not so good at that one, but uh, humble, <laughs> it, they call it heart. The second, Neither is stormy. <laughs> yeah. The, the second is, um, it used to be effing effective as the E in heart. Now it's empathetic, mm. right? Which is uh, super important as you grow. Uh, a is, um, I think, what is A in heart? Uh, attitude, I think. R is responsible. T is, mm, I, sh I have this in my wallet. I should probably take it out. Um, <laughs> but this heart is, um, oh, transparent. Oh, that's a big oh, one. Oh, yeah, yes. I know. Wow, I that know. is. I that's know. huge. I know. I know. Uh, and um, so we created this culture code, and um, that's how we teach people how to do it. So in the book, we're going to tell you how to do your M spot. Then we're going to tell you how to create an inbound operating system. That is the support requirements of understanding how you be transparent and recruit the right employees. We've got Hannah, uh, Hannah Fleischman, who's responsible for inbound recruiting, right, to get the right employee. You do, uh, you know, personas. Yes, okay. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Of course. Yeah, I know, yes. I know. I know. You've, I'm my, sure you do. My yeah, co-host. Yeah. You, you need a persona for your employees, right? So right. that they know what you're looking for. Then that's your job description. You're like, no, nah, that's just a job description. What we're really looking for is somebody like can multitask, like all the great stuff that we heard today. And when you start um, doing that, then you start creating this extraordinary um, culture that uh, attracts people, right? That uh, attracts customers, right? Because once they start seeing that, they're like, that's the type of people that's I want. It. That's the group yes. of people I want representing my company. I want a little bit of that mojo, and right. then it's easier to generate more business. Right. That's wow. That's and wait a second. <laughs> and wait a second. Hold up that book again. I you get all of that information. Yeah, it's great. It's, it's an book. audio book too. Uh, one of the biggest thrills ever is. Uh, oh, it is I an got, audio book now. It, uh, they uh, sold my audio rights. Our our audio nice. rights. I know. I'm like uh, Todd. I want to do the audio book. And he's like, all right, I'll check. So we go to the publisher and they're kind of like, now we don't let our authors read the book. And I'm like, excuse me? Why? Uh, that's, that's what so I said. Powerful. I know. And I'm like, no, 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 none of my friends can read. So I want to make sure <laughs> that they hear my voice. He was thinking of I you, know. Stormy. <laughs> I, I can't tell any of my jokes to you guys anymore, <laughs> right? And so uh, I, they go, you got to do an audition tape. I'm like, I'll do an audition tape. I did an audition tape. They called me the next day. They're like, okay, you can do your, uh, you can read your book. Oh, so nice. Todd and I went to Ta Times Square uh, a year ago in the summer. We went to a recording studio. I'm telling you, it wasn't quite as nice as this one right here in Times Square. I know, I know. I had my own audio engineer and they're like, You're, it's going to take you two days to read your book. And I'm like, no, it's, not. it's going to take me like four hours. They got it now. We are professionals. We'll do this. It's going to take you two days. Wow. And I was done in like an hour and a half. Oh, uh, wow. Uh, I wrote the book. I know exactly what I could almost do it without looking at the book, but the way they have it set up and my audio engineer was awesome. And she's like, um, Dan, there was, I heard a burp in that last sentence. And I'm like, what? She's like, a burp. you're like burped in that. I'm like, no, I didn't. She's like, listen to this. And she has like $300,000 worth of wow. audio equipment. She can hear everything. So we recorded it. And then, so now it's out on audiobook. If that's, that's so if you awesome. listen to it while yes. you're commuting and, um, you, 
you learn all of the things about uh, how HubSpot um, it becomes an inbound organization, how to make your organization an inbound organization so you can thrive in the 21st century, right? Because the train is leaving the station. You, you Absolutely, absolutely right? yes. Right. How long have you been practicing inbound storming? Wow. We've been around since 2010, and we've been practicing inbound for at least the last four or five years. Yeah. Well, and based upon his description of inbound, you've been practicing it longer. Yeah, but you know what? It, it, with with HubSpot, you've been practicing. I'm going to say we period. were we were tipping our our we were dipping our toes in the water. Mm -hmm. There was, and, and we've always had that philosophy, which helped. So it made it easy to practice inbound. Um, but there was a lot of learning to do. You know, we wanted to find out what are some of the best things that we can do. How do we treat our employees better? And and each year that we've progressed. Um, I think we do it just a little bit better than we did it the year before. I bet you do. Yeah. And of course, uh, Stormy has his own chapter, 26, right, where uh, Daryl and Stormy are prominently featured as um, examples of um, like in the inbound process with uh, my colleague. Yep. There, there it is. is. Oh, no, chapter 21. 21. 21. Oh, yeah. my yeah. God. The last five months, I've been telling you, chapter 26. If you know Stormy, oh. you should buy the book just because you know Stormy. He'll right. sign a copy, right? Absolutely. If you want, he'll sign a copy. And, and Daryl, too. Yeah. Daryl, too. And yeah. Darryl. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just saw Daryl this morning. He should be in here. Yeah. And, uh, Slacker. I know. <laughs> And uh, you guys are looking for new customers, right? So uh, uh, Absolutely. SaaS companies is what Daryl yep, told me. That's or, exactly correct. Uh, like you're a target market and you can help them grow better, right? You can help them trick out their website so they get leads and customers. That's a, absolutely the case. Right. And uh, you do both sales and marketing. So uh, huge fans. You're a great partner for HubSpot. Uh, we always tell people if you're going to buy HubSpot, right, you, you have the choice of buying it directly from us, our direct sales organization or our partners about, uh, I think it's 40% of people buy it through a partner, right? Because lots of people want to integrate it with like Slack and Zoom and all sorts of other stuff. And Absolutely. I know you guys are great at integrations. And that is the key, right? You right. every in 2019, every company is a tech company, every even if yes, you're a nonprofit, of course, yeah. right. I know. I, and uh, sometimes tech is hard and expensive for smaller businesses, right? So that if you can get an organization that um, can like bring it all together, one um, uh, uh, like CRM, one place to put your contact records, your company records, your marketing automation, your service and support, right? That gives you a huge competitive. Absolutely. Advantage. So there's Absolutely. one thing that I do have to ask you because you just said something that made me think about it. You are the godfather. You are quoted as oh, being yes, the, the godfather. godfather of the phrase smarketing. Schmarketing. Schmarketing. What is schmarketing? Is it schmarketing or smarketing? Right, S-C-H. Like you're from Brooklyn. Say it. Schmarketing. There you go. Schmarketing, you know. Yeah, no. Forget about it. Yes. All right. So I invented that term with Mike Volpe in the very early days of HubSpot. I had a cold call. Don't tell anybody Stormy. Okay. Like, like I, we had no leads that were coming through our website, right? And it's, so you really have done it from the ground up. Uh, it, it was amazing. It was amazing. Halligan's like, all right, uh, you need to get 10 customers this month. And I'm like, all right, well, I don't know, have any idea what this is. He goes, just listen to Robert's, which I did. And I knew a little bit about it. So I started making calls to people and I made a million mistakes, right? And uh, then I sold 11 of them my first month. And he's like, good, do it again. And I'm like, I, I, <laughs> I don't really know. And then it took me some time. But in like the third month, we started getting these inbound leads through our website. Right. right. And anybody. Nice. All right. If you're not getting inbound leads, you call Stormy today. Right. You call him today. <laughs> all right. Today. I know. Uh, I tell uh, CEOs all the time in the consulting and the public speaking I do. If you have more than 10 people in your uh, sales organization. Um, you go home from this event right now, you take the two least performing salespeople, you fire them, you give all the money to marketing or to an agency. All right, because mm, they're wow. in the old days, yep. 2015, okay. when you wanted to <laughs> ramp, <Old days. laughs> when you wanted to ramp, you bought more salespeople. Absolutely. And you see that all the time, yep, right? You still see it. Okay? Absolutely. That's not going to juice your revenue. I right. don't care if they're the greatest salespeople in the world. That just does not cut it in 2019. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I tell uh, marketers, if you're not practicing inbound marketing, unless you have a database of a million contacts, quit and start practicing inbound Absolutely. because 27% of your contacts are going to atrophy every year, according sure. to spot research right uh, like people move and the their companies go out of business and things like that so you got to constantly replenish i tell sales guys if you're not getting inbound leads quit are you kidding me you have to cold call and there's still people you know Deborah. there's absolutely still, they, yes they call 127 people a day 
right? And they talked oh to two. Right. I know. Does that sound wow. like a good quality no. of life? No. <laughs> right? no. no. Insane? No. I know. that, But they do. And once you get inbound leads, right? I'm like, this is uh, June of 2007. We get our first three inbound leads. I pick up the phone and I go, this is Dan from HubSpot. Oh, Dan from HubSpot. Yeah, yeah. I was just on your website. And I'm like, oh my God. This lady knows <laughs> who I am. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm like dancing around. I'm like, this is awesome. Right? So I'm in uh, this meeting with uh, um, Mike Volpe, who is our CMO, super guy, big, uh, like jolly person. And he's a scotch drinker. And he's drinking Glenlivet mm. scotch. He's got the yeah. whole thing right there. And I'm not a scotch drinker. So I'm uh, drinking um, Sam Adams. Right, and I'm like into three or four Sam Adams because it's free. That's what I'm saying. Right? <laughs> right. And and they I'm like, Sam all right, Adams. Wow. I, I need more of those leads. Those are awesome. And he's like laughing at me. Go, this. That's why we started the company, right? That's everybody needs those. I right. go, but no, I need them now. I got to hit my quota. He's like, <laughs> well, I need to create some content, and I'm like, we'll create it. He goes, I can't. I'm like, why can't you create content? He goes, I don't have any headcount. I got to hire somebody to do it. I got all these other things. I'm gonna go. Well, like, go ahead. Like hire him. He goes, but I have no headcount. I go, I'll give you headcount. And he stopped. He goes, wait a second. You would give me sales headcount for marketing. And uh, it was easy for me because it wasn't really my headcount. <laughs> I'm like, wait, yes, yes, I would. I go, it's not sales. It's not marketing. It's schmarketing, right? It's like, uh, like squished together. And he laughed. And uh, Robert came in and uh, he's like, okay, we'll figure this out. And uh, later they were interviewing Robert at Harvard Business School, this uh, professor, Dr. Thomas Steenberg, right? And uh, the piece is called Web 2.0, The HubSpot Story. And they talk about schmarketing, right? And Web it's the first time uh, that it was ever recorded. Uh, the URL, by the way, is worth $150,000. Really? I, I don't know. Oh, him, but you don't own it. Uh, ah. yeah, I'm not that smart. Right? But, uh, <laughs> you didn't go get it. Uh, I know. I, I thought it was, I was just being dopey. I was right. just being the typical the entire goofball. Right now, there's like schmarketing groups all over the place. My buddy Justin Gray hates the term. He thinks it's sophomore. I love the term. Uh, I do too. I love it. You know, it's funny. So I... Um, guest i'm a frequent guest on the podcast for the uh, las vegas chapter of the american marketers association yeah, their yeah. podcast is called marketing schmarketing there we go there it is all right okay that's typical dan tire it's better than yeah. pimpology uh it's just <laughs> one of those things that uh, it's now out in the public domain uh in reality it's the way things work today in the old days Marketing did 5% of the work, and they were always in the doghouse, by the way. Salespeople, yep. we were talking about Absolutely. this. They took the lead. They qualified the lead, which you can't do that anymore. They did the demonstration. They brought people through a closing sequence. Uh, today, marketers should be writing salespeople's emails. Right. Right? I was, Absolutely. I, I was doing a, a program for SeedSpot. Okay. Uh, SeedSpot is a socially uh, aware entrepreneur organization across the United States. Um, uh, Cypher is the CEO and um, like super organization. We we're doing a, a program over the weekend, uh, like a launch school. And um, I, I was working with some salespeople and they, they literally spent three hours on one two line email. And I'm like, what right. are you guys doing? And I'm, they're like, we, we, this is an important email. I'm like, you don't have a template for that? And they're like, no, it's got to be perfect. I'm like, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's two lines. Right. Stormy, thank you for the meeting. Let's set up another one. That's <laughs> Absolutely. it. Absolutely. But they were like so like into it. And then they were like so focused and doing all that kind of stuff that uh, it proved to me that marketing should be writing sales emails. They should have templates. They should be doing all the proposals. And uh, marketing sells and sales markets, right? So yep. I have got a slide on this process presentation this afternoon so people will see how that's interrelated. So, it, so uh, the, the, the silos of before, marketing over here, sales over here, and the hatred in between right. is, is long gone, right? Now, if you're a real <laughs> quality organization, you're going to be a marketing organization, have sales and marketing alignment. There's some of that in the inbound organization book, um, but there's lots of information on the HubSpot website about uh, how to align sales and marketing for uh, competitive advantage. And wow. so you had said something that was interesting. Um, you mentioned that if you have an agency or something, they should be creating your emails. Yes. I always thought the opposite because I thought, okay, you have to put your personal yeah. feel in it, but you're saying that it should be that professional side creating that. Yeah, it, it's, um, it's a nuanced answer. Some emails 
first of all, all emails have to be personalized. If you ever send me a dear valued customer email, <laughs> Deborah, I like you, but we will never do business again. I'm never coming back here. All right. And, okay. and this is the difference in like 2019. Two years ago, I just put you in the spam filter and we just forget about it. Today, now, now you're wasting my time. I have people storm me. I, this is insane. They'll ask me to connect on LinkedIn. And then they'll send me a spam email about their services. Right. Yes. Right. Right. What is that person thinking Absolutely. about starting a business relationship? Right. I send them a email that a response that says, "Ugh, right. <laughs> have you thought through what you're trying to do? You like you have my LinkedIn profile. You could find one small piece of information and to say, talk about, dear right. Dan, I saw that you write a book, and then talk about all the stupid stuff that you want to send me." Like, I can't believe people don't understand. And uh, like some of them are technical founders. Right. Uh, some of them are just bad people and don't understand that this is 2019. Uh, but like, you can't do that anymore. Not there are new all. rules. The new rules of engagement is like the stormy rules of the Deborah rule. You treat mm -hmm. everybody like a human being. Right. You help everybody. And I know you've been doing it since you, you started inbound. Right. Right. You have a program upstairs for 45 people today. Mm -hmm. Right. That you're paying for. Absolutely. That uh, you're just trying to help them grow their business. Better. Absolutely. Why are you doing that? That's the right thing to do. You know what I mean? I, I couldn't imagine doing it any other way. I know. So you've always had that, Deborah, yeah. when you were saying, no, that, that's the way I roll. That's the way I add value to myself, to the universe, to all these Absolutely, people. Absolutely. Yes. Like that is insane. Not every, it's awesome. That's the way we do business in the 21st century. And people who don't do that, they're going to go out of business, right? Mm -hmm. yep. Because you, you can't like send me like a, a bad email today. And so emails need to be nuanced. You can set up um, a professional email that is still personalized. Okay. Right? Uh, HubSpot has a technique Absolutely. called sequences or workflows where okay. it will say uh, Deborah in the subject line which will get you about a 7% increase in the open rate. And then Deborah, I saw that you, and then there's a personal token that lists like 14 different examples. And I'm only going to send you the, um, like the emails for public personalities that are writing their second book so that I've researched it. And I know that it's pertinent information to you because if I don't think it's personal information, pertinent info, I'm not going to send it to you. Right. Right. I only want to send things that make you smile, that add value, Right. And Makes uh, sense. and I need to know that. The thing about 2019 is you expect me to know that. Mm -hmm. If I send you something that is um, in a different category of what you're looking for or a different part of the sales process or a different persona than you are, right? In the old days, you were just like, all right, okay. Now you're like secretly- Offended. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, and absolutely. you should be. And you right. should be. Because today's world, right? There's enough information online that you should know who I am, what I need, and you should be able to- now, you might not always get it right in the first time, but you should make an intent to say, Dan, I'm trying to help you, and this is the way, right? Sometimes I just sent somebody a website grader, uh, which is uh, www.websitegrader.com, a free website that HubSpot puts out that gives you a grade of how good your website is. Mm -hmm. Then there is uh, Make My Persona, a free website that HubSpot offers so you can make your persona. And then there's the HubSpot Academy. Absolutely. Right? Which you, I know you give away all the time. Yep. If you want yes, to know about Academy, does, yes. just ping uh, Stormy. Uh, we have um, 600 ebooks, right? That Stormy has access to. Any, e I got an ebook on ebooks, right? Anything right. that you need, right? You, we'll give you one, we'll give you all of them. And Stormy's the, been holding out on me. Absolutely. Uh, well, you know. Just want you to know, Dan. I am so I holding I out. I, know. I find that very hard to believe, but I feel like a marriage counselor. A little bit. Yeah. All right. a little how, bit. how does that He's make you feel, out. Stormy? I'm right. And, <laughs> and listen, we can keep going on I forever know, with this I conversation know. with Dan. I know. I know this Dan. was a 12-minute podcast, right? Now we're <laughs> right. in like I know. our can third you, hour. Well, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and uh, so we've got to bring it this particular podcast to a close because we've got to run upstairs shortly that's right and get ready for the live presentation because sh it in very short order we're gonna have people start showing up wanting to see dan tire so dan Ooh. you shared some great stuff with us can you kind of if, if someone wants to get a hold of some of the information that you shared where should they go uh, uh www.dantire.com is my personal website www.inboundorganization.com is the book website and HubSpot.com is the uh, company website. All three of them have great information. If you want to get a hold of me, dtire, T-Y-R-E -E, at HubSpot.com, uh, dantire at gmail.com. I am at your service, right? Uh, I, like you, Deborah, uh, love helping people. 
um, and uh, to the extent of my bandwidth, happy to connect you with whatever you need to help you grow better. Awesome. There you go. So one of the things that you can do to help us help you is subscribe to this podcast. If you're uh, watching this on Facebook, go over to wherever you get your podcast and subscribe to Powerhouse Experts. Be sure to rate and review us. And as always, when you do rate and review us, give me a five star and give Deborah a one star. That will do a lot. <laughs> that'll do a lot of good. It does we'll see, absolutely no maybe not one any no good, good whatsoever. No, well, we no gave one. it a shot. We'll see you guys next time. Dan, on thank you so Our much. Experts. Thank you, Dan. Dan, thank you so much for being with us. We appreciate your wealth of knowledge. And folks, get in contact with him. There's no reason for you to have a mediocre business any longer. Absolutely. Thanks so much. Take Thanks. care. Thanks. Bye bye.